Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again with another StarMade Logic tutorial. In this video I'll be going over pulses in depth. That's right, I already did a basic intro to pulses, but I've learned a lot since that video and I have, you know, these circuits before you, um, you see before you, and they all function differently even though they're all the exact same parts and they actually do different jobs so depending on what you're building one of these should work for you first up I'll go over the self terminating or self resetting switches pulses these are great for any time you need a user to interact with your circuit or just something that needs to reset itself so when you click it it does its pulse and returns to its initial state and these can also be output from any of the positions other than the delay, depending on what you need. And they are very easy to build. I actually showed you in the Pulse video how to build this one, but they're very simple. It's an activator, into a knot, into a delay, into either the OR or an AND, depending on what the your needs are. If you want to uh, go from a low to a high or a high to a low and then you take your activator into the knot as well as the end circuit the and in this case knot into delay delay into the and and then the and gets fed back into the activator to complete the circuit and we now have a high pulse switch and this is a low pulse switch guy to keep things clean. Next up we have the non-self terminating switches. So there's two types here and the only difference is the, these two are actually identical to these two except there's no feedback into the activator. So these will need to wait until the circuit resets them before they can be used again. So I'll send a high pulse or a low pulse when receiving a low signal. So this one receives a low input and will pulse out a low output. This one receives a high input and will pulse out a high output. Now these two over here are opposites. When it receives a high input, it will send out a low output. And when this one receives a low input, it'll send out a high output. I don't need to show you how to build these because they're identical to this without the feedback. And these ones are just as easy to build here. So you have your activator and a knot into a delay. And then your choice of AND or OR depending on what you need. So we'll do it with OR. Now, you'll notice it's built exactly the same. They all look exactly the same, except the difference is how you wire them together. So this one, you wire the activator into both the knot and the, the delay. And then the knot and the delay both get wired into the end circuit, which is your hand or your OR. And we can now send a pulse. Next up, over here, is your dual pulses. Um, so these guys will send a pulse every time a state is changed. Uh, left and right, built exactly the same, just with the three gates at the end inverted and this one is your output on the far left so when you send it high sends out a high pulse or low pulse low sends out low pulse this one you change the state it'll send out a high pulse and it is fairly easy to build too so you start with your activator a knot and then your two delays 
and we'll go with a uh, low pulse here. So we want our ands, and then last, I don't know, or actually I got that backwards. This is going to be a high pulse. So the act activator gets wired into the not and the delay. The delay, or the not, gets wired into the next set of delays on the right and the delay and the and on the left. And then that goes the delay on the right gets wired into the and and then the and into the or. And uh, I forgot one thing, the activator also has to get wired into the end here. So then this side goes down the chain and that's it. Done. We now have a high pulse. And just for the sake of it, I'll also build the low pulse. So activator, not, delay, delay, or, or, and. So the activator gets wired into the next two blocks out from it, and the and on, or the or on the right. The not gets wired into its following blocks, and then this delay gets wired into the or, and then the or gets wired across. The delay on the left gets wired into the or, and the or into the and, and we now have a low pulse uh, switch that pulses each time its state is changed. Now last but not least is special cases. Um, these are both self-terminating switches, just like these two over here, except there's only one output, either a high or a low. As you can see, nothing, nothing else on the switch actually flips. And I showed you how to build this one in the original video, instead of when I should just showed you how to build this guy here but I just didn't know to replace the and and the or to get the opposite effect. So, you know, if you have a circuit doing one thing, chances are you can invert it by changing, you know, an or to an and. And, you know, that's just a general observation. Don't follow it as a rule. So this, I said this was special case here. And even though it's it's done exactly the same as, has the same effect as a better circuit. So I was building one thing and I needed multiple inputs that didn't interfere with each other so if I were to build this here and if I wanted multiple inputs I could just do a two-way chain and have multiple inputs but the problem is I can't have then have this input go do something unique so if you have you know this input you know also controls that light and this one controls that light or just for example I'll, I actually am planning a tutorial on the device that uses this special case so I'll be able to demonstrate it actually let's go over here and show you that off real quick so this is the special case I have this button and this button but I cannot have them directly linked together so this switch type was the best way to do that. And these are built, I showed you how to build that in the previous video as well. But it's an AND, and then here you want your OR or not, uh, or, or the AND, and then your delay, which actually in this case you want a non-repeating delay because it's a clock that we're building that's a basically a broken clock and then the knot. So wire down the chain and the knot gets wired back to both of the beginning two. Real easy. And you got a pulse. And to wire in multiple inputs you just take the pulse, the switch into the or or the and depending on which one you're using and wire the knot back into the switch. So these two inputs will now not interfere with each other. So very useful. 
All right, well, that covers it for my Pulses in-depth video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm still learning the ins and outs as I go, but I have a good grasp on it, and I've built quite a few contraptions to date. You know, I strive to have uh, the most efficient circuits with no bloat, you know, trim the fat. Um, so thanks for watching.